2021 resolution is to not use my snooze button. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I like that. Ask me how it's going. Is it going well? Poorly. Oh, <laughs> poorly. <laughs> like, I'm barely here. I'm like, yeah. so many snooze. <laughs> no, no, I hit snooze. How many times? Five times today. Wow. How long is your snooze thing set for? Uh, It's weird. It's like eight minutes. Okay. Yeah. That's 40 minutes. I know. I can multiply yeah. pretty good. I know. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Because because what it is, is I, my, my alarm will go off and I'll wake up mm-hmm. and I'll look at my phone yeah. and my dog is usually in the bed and she'll just kind of look Adorable. over at me. Oh my God. Oh. And then I'll hit snooze and put an arm around the dog. Of course. Go back to sleep. And then when my alarm goes off again, I've forgotten <laughs> that I've already done that once. Yep. And I think the dog will like this and I do it again. <laughs> And then, and then again, oh, and then the again, like and then my wife yells at me and I get up. I pitched, I pitched that, you know, that we should start using the dog crate. And um, oh. my wife just kind of said, I don't think you'd be very comfortable in there. So, so. <laughs> Noah, do you know what time it is? What time is it, Steven? It is time to talk about death and taxes. Ba-dum, bum, 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 bum. Welcome to Let's Talk About Death and Taxes, the only show on the internet hosted by us where we talk about the two things that Benny Franklin said were inevitable in life, death and taxes. Um, My name is Noah Chrysler. I don't know very many things about our legal system and about really much at all. And uh, these guys are two attorneys. Guys, introduce yourselves quick. Oh, hi. Um... I'm Steven Schreiber. This is kind of awkward because I do have another show about death and taxes. No. <laughs> but, um, oh, no, but I am a, an attorney. I, uh, you know, I am modern estate planning. We help people um, get their shit together and um, get stuff more organized. Um, I am a Gemini. <laughs> My name is James Champlin. I'm also an attorney. I work for Steven at Modern Estate Planning doing all that stuff that he just said. Sweet. Awesome. Um, yeah, so this show is about primarily estate law um, and estate planning and also like probate stuff um, and basically about death and dying and also about taxes. It's really fun. It's all the fun parts. Uh, I don't make fun of people dying, to be fair. <laughs> right. Just to clarify the record, death <laughs> can be funny, but not an individual's death. Right. A death is a concept. <laughs> right. We got some yeah. feedback, some negative feedback, which is in a way positive because it means our content meant something Someone to somebody. Wants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, cool. So on this episode, we're talking all about today uh, guardianship over children. Um, so I don't know. I thought at the top here we could just talk about uh, some of your guiding philosophies about gu- guardianship over children. Um, also, I should probably do a plug and, and also clarify that this is not legal advice. So guys, li- really, really pay attention to this part. If you miss everything else, this is the good part to pay attention to. Uh, this is not legal advice. This is infotainment, right? So like, don't take this and say, well, this attorney said that this was my advice and that therefore I'm going to go and form my legal strategy from that. That's not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to go to an actual attorney. If you would like us to give you actual legal advice, we could totally do that. Give us a call 404-939-7562 or send us an email info at modernestateplanning.com. If you have a question that you'd like answered on the show, in, uh, email us at questions at let's talk about death and taxes.com. Um, how did I, th- good? Yes. Yeah, that was a, that was a call to action. Yes, it yes. was. That was good. It was a call to action framed in a side of our disclaimer. Yes. But, but yeah, no, I can't give you legal advice unless you pay me and, uh, we, we signed a document. There you go. We signed a document. Some depends. You have, you have to be paid. <laughs> the, the, all the, it, all the, so, the uh, I, mean, I like money more than paperwork. Well, it, it's <laughs> kind of like a thing where if it's like, oh, if you want this to be like privileged, like privilege, give me a yeah. dollar. Yeah. There's like a very old like annoying call contract rule of consideration yeah. Yeah. where you have to pay, exchange something of value usually Yeah, money. so like give me a dollar. And, and gotcha. then because like, give me like a watch or something too or whatever it is, something of value. Yeah. In exchange what about like gummy bears? Money. Like I have a, like a, a sure. package of gummy sure. bears. Yeah. Anything. Well, that might we, af- It might affect the advice you get based on the price <laughs> yeah, of gummy if bears. If they're bad gummy bears. <laughs> no, they're Haribos. Okay? I don't they're, like they're gummy bears. Haribos. Ugh. What? Yeah. I There's no it. other. You know what's funny? Uh, I have a friend who worked for a company that makes a competitor, and we used to always make fun of him. We would always like bust out bags of Haribo and eat them and be like, these are so good. <laughs> and then we finally um, tried 
the gummy bears his company made, and yeah. they are the superior gummy. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. So you all these mediocre gummy bears. Yes. And you're like uh, oh. Black Forest gummies, in my opinion, are the superior gummy. Haribo's are a harder gelatin. Yeah. Whereas the Black Forest, you've got a little bit more softness to it. And they uh, use real fruit juice. So we're going to spin this off into an episode about candy. <laughs> Where James just reviews gummy bears. <laughs> That's next week, guys. Yep. Oh, honestly, please, please bring those in. That sounds amazing. I don't know. We're yeah, they're great. I'll, uh, I'll touch base bears. with my friends, see if we can get some freebies. Yo, sponsorship. <laughs> first sponsor on the show. Yeah. Um, cool. So, yeah. So, so this week's episode is all about um, guardianship. Before it gets bleaker, yes, let's talk exactly. about, let's talk about, let's <laughs> yeah. talk about chill, bleak, bad thing. Uh, let's talk about children having bad things happen. Yeah. So let's have a little and the court helping them. Um. So so who should think about guardianship? When is it important to think about guardianship, and why should anyone care? Anybody who has a kid. Yeah. Because you bring a gotcha. kid into your yeah. life. Yeah. Anybody okay. who has a kid. Yeah. Okay. Um. This, you know. Well. Yeah. Especially if they're under eighteen. You, yeah, you cannot name a guardian you for an adult unless they are adult. Um, unless they are unable to manage their affairs. Okay. Yeah. So if they have like a, if they're unable to work or have special needs or the disabilities, mm-hmm. then they might then they probably will need a guardian. And then you especially need the plan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So let me let me let me give you all of the information I have about guardianship that I think is in my brain. Um, I am a parent of a young child. I know I need to probably fill out some sort of – no, I, I, I guess I know that there's some form of paperwork that I'm supposed to fill out that, like, will make sure that when I die, my kids go to the person I want it to. I think I have, like, a relative, like my my sister or somebody that I think I want to have them, and she knows that. We've talked about it person to person, but I really haven't taken any action. Like, that's kind of how I think most people approach this. Is that – would you agree with that or – A lot of people – just like with with wills, tend to think they can just leave things informal, mm-hmm. yeah, um, and they don't put it down in writing. Mm-hmm. Yes, and that makes it tough. Uh, it means you have to go through more of a court process to actually determine who's going to be the guardian. It's not, and it's not well thought out, right. usually. Right. I mean, a, a lot of guardianships that you pre-establish are going to be done in a will. Okay. Um, you can also do it through other documents. The wills were, yeah. But the, the will is generally the easiest way to do it. Yeah, because in Georgia, and I'm sure other states, the probate court um, has jur- – it, it, it's probably in- intentionally has jurisdiction of both someone's estate when they died for their financial estate and also of naming guardians for children. It is – or temporary guardian. It doesn't – without getting into the weeds. But it names guardians for children when both their legal pa- – when they have no legal parents. Um or even if they do have a legal parent, and your legal parent wants to transfer that power to someone else temporarily. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the court that handles it. Oh, cool. So, so hold on. You would, if you file it in your will, all of that can be done under in one building. You can you can temporarily give guardianship control yes. over to another person. Yeah, absolutely. For what, for what purpose? Let's say, like... I've like, seen it done yeah. um, when... Someone is struggling with an addiction problem. That's what I was yes. thinking. If you go to rehab, or um, they might go to like the yeah. grandparents, and yeah. it would give them the power to like put enroll them in school oh, cool. in their yeah. house, and or maybe like imprisonment, jail time stuff. That too. right, that's another one. Because they, they, they won't resume. Because was happening. Because they may just they may want to resume parenting. Some parents don't want to be parents, and that's fine. That's a different process to terminate your rights. Mm-hmm. But they just want to temporarily. Leave her rights uninterrupted and not abandon them, but give someone else the power to do stuff. Yeah, and and you can set sort of a, a time limit on it for when it expires. Oh, cool. Um, which is important. Yeah. Um, otherwise, it becomes difficult down the road. Yeah, because yeah, then there's it, like it, a can get, it can get weird. Yeah. Yikes. Okay, so things we've learned so far. Everyone with a child should think about guardianship, and t- at least to yeah. some extent, um, because you never know if you get hit by a bus tomorrow. You never know what's going to happen. That's all you can't plan for. Right. The bus schedule. Unless maybe the bus driver can, but you, if you don't know the schedule, anyway. Sorry, no jokes about death. Sorry. But anyway, um, no. If, but if you got hit by a Marta bus, that would be almost a miracle <laughs> that you found one. But like, anyway, but going on. So anyway, so everyone with a child under eighteen, especially, should think about oh, yeah, yeah, guardianship. Um, you can temporarily give guardianship access uh, to other people. The guardianship is normally done through a will. Um, and there's like a special house in the courthouse that like our special yeah, part of the part of it, yeah most, probate most court, states yeah, have probate a probate court or surrogates court or orphans mm-hmm. court they're all 
Gotcha. Do you guys have any advice for like, okay, like, should I give it to uh, this family friend that like I've known my whole life, or should I try it's, to find somebody objective? It's situational. Or? Okay. Yeah. Um. Um. Yeah. It's definitely situational. You have to be sure that the person one is going to do a good job, um, and two, they're going to be willing to actually put in that work because that's a big ask. Mm-hmm. Then you might need to throw, so I'll say, some money behind it. Um. But it depends on who it is. If it's a family member, like if you're leaving it to your like if you have your parents or for example named as guardian to make sure your parents stay healthy and can maintain that or if it's your friend that you did you you didn't put in your will like now and then 10 years later something happens and your friends no longer live there have any idea that their name does the guardians in there um yeah. yeah i think i think that's something that more than anything else you have to stay on top of as far as do i need to update my will yeah to reflect you know changes in who's going to be the guardian mm-hmm. yeah. um because you know assets change, but you can you can have your will set up that it will deal with whatever new assets you have. But if that guardian is no longer a good guardian ca- uh, candidate, you, you got to fix that. And God yeah. forbid one of yeah. And also by default, I know children under most state laws are presumed to have two legal parents. Um, I was they could actually have more um, based on various factors. But um, let's say two. Um, if one. And it starts with bio- bio- biological parents, but if one parent dies, it's presu- par- the other biological parent typically has the they're they're still the legal parent. So mm-hmm. even if that parent's a dirtbag and shouldn't be given custody, um, it would still be up to the parent who passed to nominate a guardian, and then hopefully that guardian can convince a court to give them custody of the child. I didn't say that the other parent might not even care, but it's still that's still a factor out there. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as getting some other parents, and also if your if your other if the other parent has already died or given up parental rights, then it the stick it gets even more important to you know um, name a good guardian or to um, if you're if you've been remarried or things to consider second parent adoption or some something else to give them a second legal parent if you want them to actually be with that person. Cool. Okay. Um, that was a lot of uh, segues with that topic. No, you're good. Yeah, no, that's – I mean, I think it's a very deep topic that we could There's probably – a lot of thought to put into it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Good stuff. But who would you great. trust your kids – yeah, who would you trust your kids with? Yeah. If you only trust them with a day, and also who have your values and maintain them. And and you can leave them money. Like, a lot of times I've seen clients, like, will literally give their guardian the house that they currently live in as part mm-hmm. of the – well, it's probably through a trust, but – yeah, and do with trust. To give them complete, get them set up. That person can move in to leave our kids, leave the kids' lives completely uninterrupted and yeah. stuff like that. But the more thought yeah, you put into it, the like better it is. Them, not even remove them from school so that they can stay yeah. in the same house that yeah. they grew up in. And then the guardian doesn't have to pay. The guardian does live there rent free cool. for the very important task of raising your children. Right. Yeah. Um, right. Cool. No, that's super interesting, and it's kind of sad and dark. But um, I think that it's, it's a lot darker for not. Uh, I'm a dark person, but it's a lot darker not to plan. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Cool. Mm-hmm. Um, that brings us to our first question. Um, I tried to again pull questions specifically pertaining to guardianship. Um, and yeah, so there's a lot of like parents and stuff in these. I don't know if they're all perfectly in line with the theme, but I tried my best. Um, here we go. Because. <clears throat> Because there are probably – when people talk about guardians, let's do a quick one. That's There's also guardians of adults. So we're talking about guardians of children, but guardians of adults who also can't manage their affairs also go through a similar process. Okay. Anyway. This is great. Um, cool. Can someone name me as a trustee in a living trust without my consent? Is uh, the trust valid if the trustee, me, did not sign it? Um, I originally thought this was about guardianship, but let's but the answer, about the it, answer it is, is yes. Okay. It, it is about guardianship. Okay, yeah. you, you can keep going. You, okay. okay, go ahead. But the answer to that was yes. They can, but you don't need to be a trustee. But keep going with okay. the guardianship part. I was named as a trustee of a living will that I did not know about and did not sign. The trust is currently. Oh, um. Okay, I'm sorry. The trust currently only has the grantor's signatures with a witness signature that was notarized. I have asked the grantors to remove my name from the trustee. Um, from the trust, and they refused. They said that I can just decline upon their deaths, but now, but how is it easy is it to do this? What kind of paperwork will I need to file? The beneficiary is also a mentally disabled adult who will be without a legal guardian, ah. and the successor trustee also has also verbally informed me that they also intend on declining to serve as trustee. Um, so 
<laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna answer that first part. Okay. You can you can re- you 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 are under no legal commitment if you are named as trustee, guardian, um, king of the whatever. Um, king of the will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're under no you are under no obligation to do anything. We have the Thirteenth Amendment to the Constitution, which bans uncompensated labor. Um, but you can resign. And I was I was looking for a sheet of paper because you no know easiest to resign is you can write a sheet of paper. I resign as trustee, <laughs> sign it, maybe get it notarized mm-hmm. to hand it to the trustee and go on your merry way. Okay. Um, you're under, can you do the same thing with guardianship? You don't even need to do anything it's typically to assert your right for a guardianship. So the will will not, the will will nominate a guardian. Um, but you, the person named as guardian in, at least in Georgia still actually has to ask the court to be named as guardian. If that person doesn't assert the right or, in writing, literally another one sentence thing to the, tells the court, I don't wish to serve as a guardian of this child. Um, they'll first, hopefully, there's a backup guardian named. Um, and that person will hopefully let the court know, yes, I'm willing to do this. And if not, then we get into a murkier situation where the court has to f- determine, probably in conjunction with the um, foster system, what, I forgot the agency name, to figure out which family member would, if anyone would be able to. Um, take the my, a child that's a minor. Um, and if in this situation was this an adult? It was an adult. Special, an adult in, uh, yes, this is an adult. So I'll punt that part. But there's a there's a different part of that that the state does also intervene for adults who cannot manage their affairs. Um, but it's like through their group home system and stuff like that. But in the court would likely appoint if the, the successor trustee would manage the money for that person as well and if that failed the court probably name a new trustee to manage their inheritance gotcha so yeah. from from my initial read of the question mm-hmm. it was like this person doesn't want to be the trustee because i think that i think that they think that there's probably they don't want to receive the funds because i think they also think that that might come with the responsibility of like taking care of this like right person it's all work i'm sure right right. yeah well i mean it sounds like they're being named potentially the trust of a special needs trust potentially that's which being a trustee of a special needs trust is even a lot of work even more work than the regular trustee because there's a lot of work there's like a regulation i'm 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 probably not using my fingers wide enough for regular what the regulation book looks like what so what are some of those what are some of those things why is how is that so a special needs trust is a trust that's designed in a way that the the person who's the beneficiary does not have direct control over the assets and the trustee can only make distributions in a certain way because the adults are recipient of ssi or medicaid they're they're, what is ssi social security um, social Social security Security. insurance yeah so it's a way it's a way to try to preserve eligibility for those benefits popularly known as disability so if you will see their disability that's what they mean in this case they're not just a little bit disabled often they're like Disabled to the point there's no employability um, because gotcha. of so the trust is basically designed to like give them a level of income that's below than the, like, above right. above it. So, so oh. the SSI pays yeah. for like their rent and Medicaid pays for like, the medical bills and the trust is supposed to supplement it. Gotcha. Yeah, so you have to have below a certain amount of income and below a certain amount of assets for a lot of these programs. Exactly, it can't be in your name. And what this does is it keeps those in a separate trust that the person getting government benefits has no control over. Um, and the trustee can only make certain distributions, right? So a, a special, a normal trust can pay for things like rent, food, et cetera, et cetera. A special needs trust actually can't pay for some of those things because that would affect your eligibility and, and for the, Medicaid. And the assumption that the government pays it with the SSI and Medicaid it would cover right. those. If, you, if, you, if you're already getting those covered by trust, why do you need SSI? Right. So a special needs trust is for things in addition to that. So if you need things like um, like, a, like a therapeutic animal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Therapeutic or, animal to like renovate your house to, be, yeah. to accommodate you. Or, or quality of life issues. So yeah. things like vacations. That can be done through a special needs trust. Um, but when you're doing that, you have to be very careful on your distributions to make sure you don't mess it up, mess up their eligibility. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So that that's a sense. whole, but that's a lot of work. So <laughs> being named the trustee of a special needs trust without your consent 
is a very bad idea. Okay. Yeah. I would tell the person who's doing the planning, if you're yeah. act- if the people you've nominated to be your trustee are actively saying no, I don't know why they aren't changing Gosh, it. Maybe I would almost be tempted to-, to figure out what lawyer helped them draft that and go tell the attorney, hey, this th- person they didn't, want this. They didn't must, ask me. Because most lawyers must not know. Because a lot of times the lawyers, when I draft a trust, a lot of times people are like, we don't necessarily interview the backup trustees no. necessarily because we assume that the client told us. Mm-hmm. But yeah, if if someone came to me, it's like they're named as trust. I'm named as trustee in your document, um, but I don't want to be. Then I would want to call my client back in and be yeah. like, um, "What are you doing, bro?" Yeah, <laughs> like, this this yeah, especially for a special needs trust. This is your kid. Yeah. yeah, that is like very. I feel you like could, it's such an uncomfortable. Because you could name thing. a bank or a professional. You could name a professional trustee my, to do it if you don't have yeah. a person you can. My assumption of this question is that it's parents. Mm-hmm. Doing this for a child with disabilities mm-hmm. and naming their other children. That like, sounds gotcha. like it. Right? That's older sibling what I assume problem. this another is. Another sibling doesn't want to do it. Yeah, and that's and that's a huge conversation to have on stuff like this. I mean, it's right. not easy because yeah, like you know, parents will expect the siblings to do it, but that's a huge burden, a so, sacrifice they did not ask so for. As the and your sibling, you, that. <laughs> yeah, you're you're put in a tough spot. Yeah. But God, that's really dark. Oh my but, gosh. It, it, but, <laughs> but, but as they just generally though, as far as money goes, if there's there are so many there are prof- if, if for things of reasonable value you can have a professional bank wealth management almost every major bank in the US Bank of America Wells Fargo mm-hmm. Chase all of them have wealth management parts that do trust work cool so you can have yeah. a professional do it and also they, they also have special needs experts on their staff because mm-hmm. To make more money, if special needs trust because it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, but <laughs> yeah. But special needs trusts are ones where if you if don't want to mess it up, if you have enough money for the trust, you know, not every special needs trust has enough money to get a professional to run True. it. True, but if you can, that's I something say, to look into. Uh, yeah, I would say most. I would recommend most people. Hopefully, if a, if a thing under situation, if we the more you can fund into that trust, the better. Get life insurance, whatever it is, because mm-hmm. if that child can't work, um, and you've already been taking care of them for like fifty years, and you die in your eighties. With a fifty-year-old, with a middle-aged child who can't work, mm-hmm. hopefully you have enough money in there to get them through. Yeah, yeah. cynically, this, but this is stuff you can work through. But I haven't said that. Mm-hmm. Plan early. Yeah, plan early. Plan and often. Plan off, uh, off, yes, as often as you yeah. plan early, plan often. Talk to your attorney every year. Um, nothing else to say. Hi. We're um, starting off. Yeah. We're starting yeah. off the guardianship episode on a on a high note, boy. Well, I don't. I don't know what you expected. We're talking about a topic about <laughs> kids about, whose parents are both dead. Saying, I know. We're talking about which or- is awful. We're kicking off twenty twenty one with orphan talk. It's not like we started <laughs> talking about how you want to get a puppy and then we just dove into. We'll, we you will know, talk about. We, we will have an episode about puppy health problems. <laughs> we will we'll have an episode about pet trust at some oh, point. Yeah. Where I 100%. get to talk about my cats and my dogs. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have a pet trust. I definitely should have put something in here about Batman. Man, and I totally didn't, and that's on me, guys. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, I know, because you know the Waynes had some pretty Unrelated. dope estate planning. <laughs> Batman, uh, anyway, this is might not be an episode, but Lance was telling me the other day that Michael Keaton is doing another Batman movie, and really? I'm bothered by it. Old As Batman. Batman? Yeah. That's amazing. I mean, I'm excited for that, because I love Michael middle, Keaton. It's like baby boomer Batman. Okay, we're going to take a little segue. Have you guys seen <laughs> that like that that DC one where it's like in like an alternate universe, and Batman's old, and he uses guns, and he just like mercs people all the time? Do you know what I'm talking about? No, no. no. But I kind of I'm intrigued. It's amazing. He like he has he just swears terribly, and like he's just like, comic book. Uh, no, it's like I th- they made a movie. They made like an animated huh? film about it. It's amazing. It's so good. Okay, but I'm not gonna reserve my judgment on this Michael Keaton. Well, I don't know if I want Batman who has like back aches. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. Well, what but like, that, but what's Batman it gonna be? It is today? Is it gonna be I'll, like? I'll, I'll reserve judgment until I see it. I'm skeptical out of the gate. <laughs> is it gonna be like him being full on Batman the I whole believe time? So. Or is it more like this is like the changing of the Batman Ooh, guard? I'm not sure. We'll find out. That could so be cool. I'll look into it some It'd more. Be like a Another chance at that Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull movie, which I didn't hate. Everybody hates on that movie. I don't like that movie. It's I, you know what? Everyone, <sighs> <laughs> everybody was so upset yeah. about the Crystal Skull movie was so unrealistic. It was ridiculous. Did you watch any of the watch other Indiana, the Indiana Jones, other Indiana <laughs> Jones yeah, movies? These are movies. It's just like Star Wars, and I love Star Wars. But, like, people are like, the old Star Warses were technical masterpieces. No. The pacing was terrible. Not even sure. in the 70s but were the they technical were masterpieces. The last movie was terrible. The, the last Star Wars movie was was trash. It was I straight up awful. I didn't, I didn't, yeah, hate, I didn't it. hate it. I didn't hate it. Really? I yeah. was, but I the was, thing is. It was not a top movie. It was, I was the worst movie. It was just like. 
I was upset. <laughs> I got my right? money's worth. I was upset by a lot of the Star Wars stuff, and then I rewatched the old movies again. And I was like, actually, you know what? Which one, which, which how old? Like the, fir- the, the first, what, the first, first the originals. Yeah, 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 the original trilogy. And I was like, actually, you know what? We're good. I, th- I think what it is is we watched these as kids when we didn't we didn't look at it as critically. Yeah. And then we developed this super strong emotional attachment to it. Like that's what Indiana Jones is for for me and for a, well and James Bond. I've been watching old James Bond s- movies. Oof. I never saw Indiana Jones them. until I was an adult, and Lance made me watch them. But and everybody's saying it's so unrealistic. There's aliens. Oh, we're going to talk about how James is wrong about the new Star Wars movies for the next three minutes, and then we're going to continue to talk about yeah, that. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. Here like we a, go. Like so let me cleanser. jump in. Like so everybody, says, so, yeah. everybody so, says that it's too unrealistic, oh, no, but no, in no, one of the old Indiana Joneses, you shared your opinion. They cut a yard out of a guy, and it's still beating. Oh, which is an amazing shot. You yeah. specifically mentioned the mm-hmm. Star Wars movies, though, and you said that the new ones weren't that bad. Let me go for a moment on how that go, that's go incorrect. Right ahead. The new Star Wars movies are all just awful, terrible, dog shit storytelling that is just fan service, and they're uh-huh. just terrible. I'm okay yeah. with that. There's, they, <laughs> like, they literally... You know what, they tell you, this is just fan service. I'm like, okay, $15 here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's there's a MacGuffin in both the first and second one. They're all about like finding the Micron thing that like uh-huh. basically is this yeah. map that goes and takes them to this fucking place. And like, it's all... Bullshit. Like in the first one, they they the the MacGuffin is finding Luke, right? The map to Luke, mm-hmm. right? So we're all sure. just gonna have like this big meaningless fight over <laughs> this thing that leads to a character. They go and find the character, and then the, the directors thought they were being subversive to have Luke be a total dick, right? <laughs> Which uh-huh. totally is against everything against Luke's character that is uh-huh. established from mm-hmm. the previous three movies, and also like all of the EU stuff. Um, cool. So that's fucking terrible. Hate that already, right? Then the next movie is about finding the the one to the to the planet where uh-huh. now Palpatine is right, and so we're chasing this other spoilers. meaningless MacGuffin. Yeah, spoilers, guys. If you're actually also you're the in whole quarantine, episode. doesn't watch the movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what else are you doing? But like the reason like, you don't have that right is because it's a plot driven you know, yeah. story, right? When it should be a character driven story, like all the original Star Wars. Where, which yes, I mean it was like, pretty much plot driven, but like you had amazing characters, and in the new films, the characters fucking suck. And also, I'm sorry, at the end of the third movie. There's no fucking reason why Palpatine should be there. There's no they did yeah, not earn that. I agree. I think that the ending true. was I did not like the ending of the last movie. It felt very um, lazy. It was awful. It's like it's I like Game like, of Thrones like just throwing it out. Yeah. <laughs> it's really and and I felt like up. the force dyad thing was never really explained the very well. What do, you, what do you mean by that? It, what do they call it? like where like Ray and Kylo Ren are like connected in the force? Oh yeah, that was stupid as fuck. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah okay, th- this is where you feel like you probably wrote yourself into a corner and you have to mm-hmm. wrap this movie up right. in 30 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, because people hated like the, the uh, when it was originally released, they hated it, so they rewrote it. I don't know. Um, but yeah, the last thing I'll say is that it's completely ridiculous to like ha- pretend. You're still, within we- the, you're still within your. Okay, cool, perfect. <laughs> the last thing is that it's completely ridiculous that this like group of like insurgent like rebels like is able to take out this literally a planet filled with spaceships that were t- that were secretly manufactured. Okay. Wait, like, wait, 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 wait. When you yeah. watched the original trilogy, yeah, were you like? Pro Empire? No, 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 no. Space Station exploded. Makes sense, right? It, it's so uh-huh. easy to blow up a planet in these movies. Oh, <laughs> can we also point out that you have to have a big fucking thing. Alderaan just blows up like ten seconds. Yeah, Why because... you just take out more planets? But that way was... it would have been way faster. <laughs> <laughs> they just seemed to be able to, to blow up that one planet, and that was it. The, uh, the entire rest of the movie, they weren't blowing up planets. When they could have just turned this ship around and just kept blowing shit out of the sky till they wanted. Because this. they. If you just keep and also, why would you build two flawed ships? <laughs> anyway, well, the second if, one was a, the second was a, one was, 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 was still ruse. in progress. Yeah, if you keep just oh, blowing yeah. up planets, you don't you, you you want to rule the galaxy. You don't want to just blow it all up. You, you blow up you one to make a point. You know what? Planets right. are a rebellion. Just take them all. That's out. actually a good point. My thing is <laughs> but though, cynically, but there's valuable resources on those planets. Oh, sorry. I don't know why I got angry. <laughs> in the last, okay. So like, my thing I is, hit ten thirty. You're no. good. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> the, for three movies, we fought this <laughs> this force, right? And we yeah. like we, like this this empire force yeah. that we yeah. cannot seem to win against. And in the last twenty minutes, yeah. they literally take out like a thousand ships that are like yeah. supposed to be more powerful than the main villain of the. Th- 
third. I can't remember how trilogy. they did justified it. They were like, oh, the shielding is, they're all connected. Anyway, whatever. Yeah, but if the, were, Empire, if the Empire played how I played. the ships were in dry dock. But, but if, they were, if, they, if the Empire used its army like how I play Civ Look, 6, this would have been over like a movie. <laughs> no, maybe the issue is you just didn't understand it. Oh, that might be it. <laughs> No, I understand. It's a terrible film. Is this like with film. your wife? I would, <laughs> oh, no. Maybe, God, maybe, no, that's not how I argue with my understand. wife. you don't understand. Because I'm like, oh, she murdered you. I'm I'd not be a, like, oh, no, it, I get it. That's not how I argue with my wife because I'm not a bad person. <laughs> <laughs> or you don't like to be murdered. Both. <laughs> Why not you know both? Probably how to, because you probably knows. Look, Very if people know how to kill people, and I'm sure how to get I, away with at least one murder. My main goal <laughs> is that when my wife eventually kills me, she does not have a justification for doing it. <laughs> and hopefully she won't make it hurt. <laughs> it's like, anyway, no, it would be very kind. We, very we're two kind. minutes. Oh, no, sure, yeah. We're Save two minutes house past our thing. Yeah, if Lance murders yeah. me, I prefer he does it quickly. Final <laughs> point. The yeah. new Star Wars trilogy is trash. If you want good yes. story-driven Star Wars, watch The Mandalorian. And that or is legal advice. That is legal <laughs> This um, is, that's not the firm's position. That or is the watch the Clone that, Wars. Oh, you are overloading. Yeah, it's not good. I'm blowing yeah, it out. It's terrible. Yeah. Out. Mike, but, also, um, don't include this as an ex standalone clip because that is not. Also, <laughs> the, I got that three year that Disney Plus subscription nice. and I'm wearing the fuck out of it. It's so oh, good. Yeah, Did great. you watch The Mandalorian? Uh, I have not yet. Oh, it's so good. I've, I've watched like random shit. I rewatched The Simpsons and stuff. I have no idea what the hell I'm doing with Disney Plus. It's so good. Okay, here we go. Um, cool. I know we've already talked about a series of unfortunate events, but I felt like we couldn't do the Guardianship episode without talking sure. about it again. Here we go. For those who, for those who aren't in our podcast canon yeah exactly <laughs> you have to jump this back to episode so. 4a <laughs> yes. um cool when a massive fire kills their parents three children are delivered um to the custody of a cousin and stage actor count olaf who is secretly plotting to steal their parents vast fortune um also i thought we could just watch the Someone's getting murdered in that neighborhood. What an asshole! Actually, he's, he's wrong. That's not what it means. He means they died. Yeah. Unless the fire actually murdered them. Well, the thing is, the fire doesn't kill you. It's the smoke. And the heat. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I am Count Olaf, your new guardian. Do you know what this is? It looks like a list. Wrong. It's a list. A list of chores. We know you're just trying to steal our parents' fortune. We have to get out of this wretched place. Go back to the house. Where it's safer than strangers can't get you. Strangers? Where? The boat of their children will be destroyed. What? Hmm? Um, so yeah, you so, get the idea. So it looks like some of those kids are older. Not, they're under 18, but old yeah. enough to... They're, I think yeah, they're they are, like 16, uh, right? I would call them they are adolescents. Yeah. Um, cool. So basically, uh, the plot, you know, these 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 well-off children, uh, their parents pass away, and uh, they go to a distant relative named Count Olaf, who uh, is basically trying to steal the fortune. He attempts to marry Violet in one of the books, which is really weird and kind of mm, incestual. Like yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's a cool. a 16-year-old? Yeah, weird. No, no. Not, cool. not cool. I I don't that is not an approved position of modern state planning. <laughs> <laughs> it um, is very much opposed. Um is the plot of this show slash book series um, what legally happens if children have no legal no. guardian? No, 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 no. No, it's not? Okay, so the if they have no will, so I'll i I'll split the two parts up because in most states in Georgia, I'm a Georgia lawyer, they split the money in one side versus the personhood in the other side okay so for people who die without a will and they leave money to their kids um the court will appoint a conservator um to manage the kids funds so it will be a usually a court appointed attorney um who's operating at the the pleasure of the county probate court doesn't really that but their goal is to hold the kids funds and keep it safely invested until they turn 18 and then they cut a big check to an 18 year old, which is bonkers. Um, and then with any luck, the kids won't spend it all by their 19. Yeah. Um, but as far as custody goes, 
and remember that the money stays with the court and the court will release a budget for the kids if approved to pay for stuff um mm-hmm. but the custody is determined by whoever asked for it first partly and then oh they just two function it might be highly situational if there are people who want custody of the kids they can go to the probate court and petition for a temporary guardianship um to get immediate custody um and if and fortunately, the kids are old enough where the probate court judge will probably ask them what they think. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So if they're like, that dude's evil, <laughs> I'd prefer you just th- left me on a street corner. Yeah. They'll probably allow, they'll probably listen to the kids' thoughts about who should be a temporary one. Okay. Um, and th- it may, and for older kids, it might stay temporary until they turn 18 and become adults. Um, for younger kids, maybe not. Um, but eventually, they're. That that person may also want to adopt them eventually, and that's to a different court where it goes to the whole much deeper inquiry of making sure that that person is a suitable legal parent, um, and with the home evaluations, all the all song and dance, and employing the best interest of the child test, I believe in most states. But um, if no one steps up to be a guardian of the kid, it will probably go back into the default system of the state. I, state slash county system of foster the foster system essentially so we're, so, we're a family still preferenced in the system but it would um it's not just an automatic thing the yeah court still, the court still does check and do some analysis they gotcha. it, they, they, they tried to leave children with monsters yeah. yeah if they can i mean we know news and events it does happen but right. we try okay. they try to avoid it rich white people will not have this problem i, I i'm a hundred percent certain that they will have rainbows and sunshine as their pay a, a happy nun will take care of them or something they will probably be okay Okay. Um, so, so basically, what I'm hearing is that this is different than the than the process that finances go through, right? So, yeah. like, so where your finances might go to like a, a relative connected to you before going to the state, like the kids, if if the kids are involved, the kids couldn't even give away the money if they wanted to. No, the, I'm sorry, what? The kids couldn't even give away the money if they wanted to. Right. So, so the money goes to the kids, right, through right. inheritance, but because they're under 18, they can't touch it. Um, you know, their guardian can request to use some of it for expenses of, of raising the kid, mm-hmm. but the kid doesn't really have control over it. It's all being handled by someone appointed by the court yep. to and gotcha. watch and, that. And, 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 the so court, and the court checks the bank accounts every year at a minimum, sometimes more mm-hmm. often. They'll see what's going on. They'll have to make returns and inventories, and um, there's an insurance Accounting policy over it. and all that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so part of the plot of the book is that these kids don't have anyone else, right? They don't have any other family. They don't have any other people that they know very well that could potentially mm-hmm. take okay. on the burden and responsibility. I'm skeptical in real life that would happen, because yeah. with three well-to-do kids, there will probably be people who emerge out of the woodwork in the community. Well, but think about it this to. way. The question is whether it's looking for a relative at any cost or whether they're looking for a similar fit. The relative that they go to is a count, which tells me, <laughs> and they all have American accents, so maybe they were political exiles from another country. <laughs> okay, we can ask that stayed, on a level. And they stayed off the radar, and that's why they don't have a lot of close, uh, <laughs> close personal connections. Wait, having said that, Sure. <laughs> Anything could be true. We could make this work. Uh, um, for the average American middle class child, like I'm sure friends, neighbors, and the family right. would be yeah. willing to take in the kids. Makes sense. I've, mm-hmm. I mean, I've, I've, I've had such a situation. I mean, this is my personal. I'm not. I'm obviously. I've had where my friends have had their parents die, and they literally just move into another. Mm-hmm. Live with their best friend for a year when they finish high school or whatever. Yeah, so situations right. typically emerge, and then they just formalize it with the court so that they can finish school and stuff like that. Cool. Yeah. It, like the Flash when he moves in with his. Okay. But so. honestly, if a, if, a, if, a, if a count came out of the woodwork, till I would be, I would, if I was a probate court judge, I'd listen. Yeah. <laughs> have you guys seen the Flash? His, no. his dad goes to prison and then he moves in with the girl that he has a crush on. Like he, they like they're weirdly like brother and sister, and it's weird. It's like it's the like, rest of development awkwardness. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. If the children in this situation are being mistreated um, in the new home, what happens uh, before the government steps in to remove the children from the situation? Like, what, what do they have to prove? Like, who do they go to? This is a little bit deep. So with the temporary guardianship, the burdens a lot. The kids, it's easier to revoke a uh, guard, a temporary guardianship than anything else. So if they're under that level, um, the court will revoke it if there is evidence of um, abuse. It's very easy for them to revoke it because it's a, it's in the name temporary order. What would they what can, would constitute abuse? 
like a big long list of chores would that be abuse or is that probably abuse? not unless the chores oh, unless the chores they're being made to do are dangerous or inappropriate for kids their age yes. and ability or they're like they can't go to school because they're doing these chores right. okay um um it would be but it's often in the discretion of the court when they look mm -hmm. at the body of the evidence if it looks bad like your big two are generally like neglect and abuse right so neglect could be not enough food in the house it could be dirty uh not going to school not going to get medical treatment you know there's there's a long list of things and then mm -hmm. abuse is a little more straightforward yeah. yeah yeah um my third question what can you do to make sure your kids never have to go through a situation like that at least minimally write a will and also make sure your guardians are aware that you have a guardianship yeah try and if you have kids you know talk to your family and also, hopefully, be on the same legal page as your child's other parent. Like, if you're married, obviously, that's easy. You live together. But if you're divorced or mm -hmm. estranged, you 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 want to get something legally clear about that relationship. So if dad is a dirt bag and he's gone, maybe we can figure out dad to sign a document not objecting to a temporary guardian if they die. Or realistically, if he wants to wait for anyone, that's even better. But there's a reason why people don't do that. Yeah. Um, but whatever. But to go through the dirty work of clarifying that stuff while you're alive before yeah. something happens. And what you can always do with, with kids in particular, with wills in particular like this, I recommend people file them at the probate court while they're alive so that there's not a drop off um, time wise. Cool. Cool. Um, this last one is a little bit tongue in cheek, and I don't mean to make light of this situation, but I no, no orphans. Let's make fun of them. <laughs> yeah, Noah. I need some. I need some more. I need, I need some more negative. No <laughs> no, I, need, I, need, I need some little call me heartless. Today. <laughs> um, the last question here is: If you had three child servants living in your home, what kind of tasks would you outsource to them? Um, I'm just gonna decline to answer. I'm decline this. this question. If I had, yeah, if, I'm not. I'm not one to sit here and fantasize <laughs> what, what I would do if I had no. three indentured servants. No indentured servants. If I had kids, okay. the only task I would have them do would be tasks that involved like reaching behind like the TV to pick up an object. Gotcha. Like, like small things I couldn't hands. reach. <laughs> yeah. I would. I would have them all learn karate. Yeah. That'd be cool. So I could have that movie like Three Ninjas. <laughs> Each one would have a math that's a different color, and each one would have a specialty that they're good at. Like the Ninja Turtles. Like like the kids in Three Ninjas. I never saw Three, three Ninjas. Also, I would start. Also, I would start. You're a, young. I would start you're a coal mine. Your time. Yeah. The, uh, you start uh, a coal mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's that's my joke. <laughs> I would make sure little kids are great at coal mining, according to like Dick yeah. and the Kenzian books. Let's give it a go. <laughs> Love that. Hey, you want to dig the tunnels this big? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Chimney sweeps too. All of them sweep chimneys. Even oh, though I have fantastic. a gas fireplace, it, yeah. it would not be that effective. Ah, oh, you just gotta but... get a creosote log. You'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Oh, those are nice. Um, cool. Okay, great. Here we go. Um, we're gonna. This is a question from Abo.com. I oppose child labor. It's our position in this firm that we support the Thirteenth Amendment banning slavery. Very good. As a black person, I doubly support it. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Um, this is a question from avo.com. We're going to get through this one, and then there's one more fun one, and then we're going to close out the show. Sound good? Oh, yeah. We're going to try to do it in the next 15 minutes. Here we go. <clears throat> in the event of both parents' deaths, could an 18-year-old daughter adopt or become the guardian of a 12-year-old half-sister? Um, my wife passed away, leaving me to care for our 18-year-old daughter, um, her biological slash my stepdaughter. Um, and our 12-year-old daughter we had together. Both my late wife's parents and grandparents are deceased, and, ha and she has no siblings. I have been estranged from my family for 15 years. If something happens to me, could my stepdaughter adopt her half-sister? Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, most, I can't, most states, I would say yes. Um, just check with 18-year-old because it would be a lot of commitment for an 18-year-old mm -hmm. to – Potentially have to raise a twelve-year-old, right? Like Party of Five or something. I, I don't know why that comes to mind. That's, that's like the TV show that illustrates this. <laughs> I never this. watched that one. It's, um, it's their parents die in a car accident, and the oldest kid adopts the other kids. <laughs> that's about the plot. Could you, hilarious. <laughs> could you? That's could like, you? Um, when is it too early to start planning for that? Could I write something when no. she, when the daughter's sixteen that says if the daughter's eighteen, uh, then she gets to adopt uh, the person if okay, I pass. So, in this scenario, did someone, the mom passed already? Uh, the mom passed and the dad. So, okay, does he eat, okay so t talk about it. I mean, as soon as he turns 18, I mean, honestly, I would talk about it even earlier. I mean, you may have a scenario where you have one person ahead of the daughter and then have the daughter as a backup until she turns 18 and revise it. 
But I want to talk with her if something happened to us. You know, like, obviously, you know, if something happened to the mom, would you be, is this something that you would be willing to do? We know statistically it's not likely to happen, all these other things, but we'll make sure that you have all the resources you need. Like, the, you'll have the house, you'll have all these other things to make it workable, but can you do this? And she'll probably say yes because it's a remote possibility, but if you can at least make it worth her while, because she might be giving up like some of her college or whatever right. wild times right. people have, which I honestly is overrated. <laughs> like, <laughs> I would trade that. For, yeah. yeah. But nonetheless, but um, as a talk you can have and get in, get put into a will. Um, gotcha. At least. Cool. Okay. That's super interesting. So yeah. So if you're, if one of your children is almost of age then uh that's a potential it is a baffling phenomena Mm -hmm. that you go from needing a guardian to becoming potentially becoming a guardian in like a day yeah i think i think in that situation it's good to think up that backup and and yeah you could write a will saying you know if if my daughter so-and-so is over 18 i appoint her as guardian over my other daughter and Mm -hmm. as your 12 year old Um, gets older you may want to address it with her and then a second clause saying you know if my oldest daughter has not yet reached 18 i appoint so-and-so as the guardian of both until oldest daughter turns yeah. eighteen, and the, and that, you can like you can write that kind of stuff. Yeah, out. and it could be a fr- a close friend. It doesn't be a family member. Right. If you like your family, you're not that close to them. No reason to involve them. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It could be someone, as long as someone who's consistent with your values. Ideally, geographically close to minimize any disruption to their lives. Um, and you have the trust fund or whatever to pay for stuff. Yep. Cool. Because you don't want to create a burden. Yeah. No, definitely. Um. Cool. That brings us to this last bit here, which I had kind of some fun with. So I hope you guys let me run a little while with this one. Sure. Um, Here we go. (laughs) (laughs) I don't Um, have a choice. I'm on this ride. (laughs) (laughs) Um, This is a segment called Could I Do This? Where I basically explore the legal uh, periphery. I don't even know. the the, Periphery? The the boundary. The legal boundaries of what I'm allowed to do. Sure. (laughs) And not get arrested. And not get arrested (laughs) and also have it go through um cool could i set up a nuanced promotional scheme where upon my death a video and press release gets released publicly announcing that i've made a celebrity the guardian of my children okay Okay. so let's say i have two children still talking yeah okay sorry sorry. let's say i have have a fun story to share at the end fantastic (laughs) let's say i have two children right and i'm and and in this example i say uh, that I want First Lady Michelle Obama, former First Lady Michelle Obama, uh, to look after my children. So here we go. Let me just read this. Um, the idea is to create a situation where the celebrity guardian is socially pressured into looking after my children for me. Um, and, and then I put a quote here that would probably take place in the video. Uh, I have entrusted my children to First Lady Michelle Obama so that she can look after them. Of course, Mrs. Obama can deny this request, but she would be doing my children to lives of misery and make that as public as possible so that she looks like a bad guy if she doesn't do so it. So you're just like cuckoo birding this. Like putting your kids in another person. Yeah. Okay. You know the cuckoo bird? I don't know. It'll lay its eggs in another bird's nest and knock one of the other bird's eggs out. And then the cuckoo bird egg hatches. Yes. And the other bird raises the cuckoo bird. That's what I'm trying to do. Can I do this? You're trying to ride on Malia and Sasha's like, (laughs) get get some of that, whatever that fuel, the vapor, the aura. I mean, she seems like a very responsible, good Oh, no, I'm 36 right now. And if she was like, I'm going to take care of you for a couple weeks, I'd be like, sure, I've had something to learn. I'm sure I'm I'm a terrible adult. (laughs) I'm sure I'll pick up something from you. So, Stephen and James, could I do this? Yeah. Okay. You can. You can. Yes. You can. You can. Put whatever you want. I can write it down. We can run those. We can run those. You can put whatever you want in your will. (laughs) Yeah, we can run those videos. It's that's an that's an entirely you. You can have that language, and you can run that video. You can have those billboards. I get it sent to every single journalist in the United States. I don't know what they'll do with it, but you can send it. You're gonna get a bunch of weirdos coming out of the woodwork to volunteer (laughs) to take care of your kids. Straight to Michelle Obama. Yeah. You once again, uh, you can do all that. Michelle Obama could take you up on it. She Mm -hmm. could. I, I don't know if a media campaign is the most effective and is, means to your goal. And, and this is not me saying anything You could negative. literally be like, uh, some, someone will drive my kids to Michelle Obama's house in D.C. and knock on the door and be like, hey, can you be our guardian? Yeah. And she could be like, what the heck is happening? But she could say, yeah, I need she the good might. PR. She I, might. I'm bored she, and I need the PR. Nothing might, negative against her, but she won't. 
you know, uh, uh, she, she shouldn't. What? Not unless she's a goddamn saint. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, that's kind of the idea, though, right? Like, it's like it's like basically, you know, socially manipulate the situation so that she looks like a bad guy if she doesn't. That's what this the, is kind of a mess. Historically, up. Historically, that's, that's what the church would do, or something like that. You would like leave a child with. There's organizations that theoretically you would leave a child with, but um. Yeah, a particular person feels like over the line, like as far but, as but like, I, import. I, yeah, I think you you can. I just you can you can you can have those ads, Michelle Obama. You might want to lay the groundwork. Okay, but as far as celebrities, you can name a celebrity. Um, it helps if you know that celebrity. Yeah. So Michael Jackson's will is a real treat because his will, like I named Diana Ross as the guardian of my children, but he knows Diana Ross. Right. That's super chill. And in my experience, um, work, so I used to work in a court that was very pro se, so we'd have a lot of people come in and file things against celebrities just because, you know, there's mental illness going on, right? And they, they really thought that this celebrity was stalking them, Wow. Right? So people would come in to file against, you know, celebrities or politicians, and generally the court will look at that and, you know, they'll, they'll generally look at it quick enough to make sure there's not, like, a real connection there, and, and that generally doesn't. Work yeah, out. yeah, like they, they don't make the person come but, to court. But you would yeah. sue because yeah. the, the guardian you guys, Michelle Obama, would actually have to affirmatively go to the court to say, "I want to be guardian." Yeah. So you'd have to like pressure her to do something. Like, you right. have to serve her and be like, "Surprise! You have yeah. thirty days to object to being guardian of these kids, or they're now yours." Yeah. Which would be a fascinating way of doing guardianship, but. Not what I'd support. Yeah, I think <laughs> you just, shouldn't be. Yeah. you shouldn't be forced to have children so, legally or in no context. Like they people should just drop kids at your door legally or um, yeah. You, well, you can't just drop a kid off at someone's door. Well, that, that's, that's illegal. That's, what, that's, what, that's like an equivalent. That's, that's like one step further than what Noah was proposing in his yeah, story. Though. Like, like I would you, never do that. You definitely but couldn't. No, I would. I would. I would orchestrate an elaborate scheme to like, pressure someone so, to so do here, it. Here we go. Here's here's something but, you can't. But, but not the goal is to get Michelle Obama to pick up the kids. But the the next step forward yeah. in the guilt campaign would be like to actually have the kids in front of you, her. You can't. Don't do that either. You can't put any role like that. Your children are to be dropped off at their house and left there. Okay. You can't do that. Right. Because that would be illegal. Right. And you can't put an illegal thing in your will. It's not enforceable because it's illegal. You can't say yeah. commit rob a bank. And <laughs> use my, that to my pay state has funeral. no money. Rob a bank to keep it fine. Right. Okay. So you can't yeah. do that. But yeah. everything else, you know, it's it's legal. Is that not? It's not going to get enforced. It's not useful. Yeah. Gotcha. I guess at the point, like, you want a useful estate plan. Michelle Obama could be your number one pick. And then have realistic backups. <laughs> it's like, yeah. first Michelle Obama, then my mom. Yeah. It would be, a, Michelle Obama mm -hmm. might get a, me as the probate lawyer might call but Michelle Obama. you can maybe like phrase it like, first Michelle Obama, and then my real mom. That's what I mean. Oh, sorry. Yes. Not, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. 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 So, okay. That's interesting. And then, my, then like my actual friends and actual things. But I, I, as a probate lawyer, I could call Michelle Obama's, whoever will answer for her age representative and be like, hey. You're not going to say no, but it's my fiduciary obligation to ask. <laughs> yeah. like, so what I'm hearing Are you is looking that... for new kids? Barack allegedly wanted more kids in his, really? in his memoir. Now he has mine. <laughs> and now and, and maybe, and maybe Barack is like, you know what? Maybe we should. Yeah, We're super know. rich. We'll send the Andover. So we don't have to, they don't have to live in our house. <laughs> mm -hmm. So what I'm hearing is that, yes, it's totally legal. And uh, I could. Not that I should, but I could. Um, yeah, I'm not going to say something. like. I don't. You should not. This, is, yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I will affirmatively say you should not. Right. You could. And the official stance yeah. of the firm is to be proactive and obviously choose the person that is like, you know. If you're going to choose a celebrity to be the guardian of your children, make sure the celebrity is on board. Yeah, make sure you know the celebrity <laughs> and they're on board. Yes. Right. You don't have to know them. Just make sure they're on board. Well, it, it's, yeah. it helps. You, you might not know that. Because it helps to know that they, if you know them, hopefully you'll know if they're a bad parent. Yeah. Yeah. I've got some rapid fire questions for you guys. Quick yes or no's. Here we go. We're not good at that. I know. Diana <laughs> Ross is like a solid pit choice. Could I assign guardianship over my kids based on a competition? For example, no. Demonstrate how much. <laughs> demonstrate how much you love my children in this hot dog eating contest. If you truly love my kids, eat the most hot dogs in ninety minutes. Could I? Could I establish this? It's kind? not a judicial standard that yeah. I would want to. So many things on wills <laughs> haven't been litigated to a point where there is a solid answer. So okay. like so. So maybe. Maybe. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'll, 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 if you asked me to do that, I would say no. Yeah, I would. <laughs> I wouldn't write a will like that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. Um, I'll give a qualified, yeah. Could I assign guardianship over my kids out of spite? So maybe I view them as a burden. Could I assign them to one of my enemies? Hopefully your enemy is an, a nice person. Again, so, yes, sure, yes. you can do that. But they would have to... As long as your accept. enemy is over 18. And okay. Hopefully your enemy is an upgrade. You sound like a pretty spiteful person. So yep. Hopefully your enemy is like a nun or something. Gotcha. Um, can I assign guardianship over my kids to someone in another country? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's a normal thing. That's a legit. Yeah. You just want to make sure, because I know a lot of people who are immigrants or families are overseas. You just want to make sure you have the logistics worked out on yep. that. Cool. Mm-hmm. What about somebody who's an astronaut and they're currently on the moon? That's fine. So their residence is not the moon. It, okay. Uh, their if, residence is on Earth. If yeah. it is the moon, in 30, year, 30 years from now and it is the moon, we'll figure it out. Okay. We'll so whoever's separate. taking care of their kids but will the, take care of your kids. But the answer kids. would still okay. be yes. You know if they lived on the moon, the answer would technically be yes if they let kids come up to the moon. And to, pre- to preempt your follow-up question, no, you cannot force your executor to take your kid to the ISS. <laughs> Unless <laughs> if the, if the guardian asks, if the guardian could come back down from the moon, pick up the kid, and take them to the moon to their moon house or something. I'm really being ambitious about. What it has to be pre-approved do. by NASA. And and the, probably <laughs> there's the, a lot of red tape. And, and the gotcha. court where the person lived. Um, <laughs> yeah. Can you assign children to be uh, to, to have the guardian be like an animal? No. No. Okay. How about a robot? If it's a no. very sophisticated. Not robot? yet. Not, Not yet. yet. Perfect. That was my I, last question. And God, hopefully I hope not. not. I'll stay on brand. I'm against AI. I concur. I concur with this position. It is yeah, the legal no. opinion that AI is dangerous. Babies raised by robots is some brave new world shit. No, I'm not interested in it. <laughs> partly because all I can do for a living is based on what I know. Yeah. If I think computer one ups me, I am in trouble. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Let's talk about death and taxes. If you would like help planning your estate, you need to give us a call. Our number is 404 404- Nine three nine seven five six two. Especially if you live in the Atlanta, Georgia area, uh, we'd love to help you out. If you don't, we'll refer you to somebody local. Um, but yeah, guys, we're an estate planning law firm, so we handle all sorts of things like last wills. Um, we do uh, other trust. things, trust, power of attorneys. Sometimes. If you're not sure if we do it, call us and ask. And if we don't do it, we'll tell you we don't do it. Yeah, and we'll really, hook anything, you up with somebody who does. Anything related to getting your shit together. If you yeah. have any. Uh, Getting your, yeah. your life if you organized. gotta get your garage organized, give us a call. I can figure it out. <laughs> I got this. I, just, I know people who'll do it. Whatever you're watching, make sure you interact with us. Let us know your thoughts. We want to hear from you. Post a comment. And uh, if you're listening on iTunes or a, a podcasting app, please give us a five star rating and write your thoughts about what you think about our show. Guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. Have a great day.